Boy howdy, do I have a wacky story to share with you today. On today's episode of I Can't Believe It's Not Florida, we have the story of a man in New Jersey who crashed his car through a police station while listening to Welcome to the Jungle. So I'm guessing he had that song cranked to max volume and the adrenaline was pumping in his body. The song was reaching its crescendo, it's about to go into the chorus and then this guy's eyes roll in the back of his skull. Welcome to the jungle, summons the spirit of evil Knievel, takes the wheel, the demon of speed is there, puts the pedal to the metal and just crashes into the police station. And then he like, celebrates, kind of. It's, it's an unbelievable clip here from the surveillance camera footage. He gets out of the car like a gymnast who just landed an impressive trick. He like strikes a pose like he was expecting some kind of huge celebration, a massive round of applause as if it was a concert or something and he was performing. It's almost impressive just how much gusto he gets out of the car with. I don't know what he was expecting to happen next. Man thought he was in an audition for Expendables 5, I guess. He's a fucking action movie hero. I have to wonder what he thought would happen next. Maybe he expected them to let him off with a warning because it was so cool. The officers would come out there and just be like, Brother, that was the most badass thing I've ever seen. Fist bump. God bless America. Now get out of here. This is your warning. But unsurprisingly, they didn't just slap him on the wrist and send him on his way. He is facing potentially life in prison, not only for this incident, but he actually did something very similar previous to this. This isn't his first rodeo with crashing a car into a building. So apparently he had crashed his gold Toyota SUV into a garage of a private residence to try and scare and harass the homeowner, which he is still facing charges for right now. So this fucking dangerous unhinged goofball treats motor vehicles like they're missiles. He is just blasting these into any building. Nowhere is safe. You know that statistic that gets tossed around from time to time about how you're more likely to be killed in your chair in the living room than you are on a plane, in a plane crash? I'm starting to believe that now because with this kind of person out there in the wild, you never know when a car is going to be just crashing through your walls like the Kool-Aid man, like a fucking torpedo and just hitting you in the living room out of nowhere. Like, that is just, it's incomprehensible. So he's built up quite an impressive resume here with a lot of charges to his name. So for the first incident, he's facing burglary, criminal mischief, possession of a weapon for an unlawful purpose, and harassment. And now for this one, he's facing a terrorism charge, which carries a minimum sentence of 30 years and a maximum sentence of life causing widespread injury or damage, aggravated assault, burglary, possession of a weapon for an unlawful purpose, and criminal mischief. The punishment fits the crime here. It's not like these are exaggerated charges. He just blindly blasted his vehicle into this building. He had no idea if there was going to be people on the other side of it, which could have easily killed people. So yeah, all of these charges really fit the crime. He is not safe to be in society, especially not behind the wheel of a vehicle. Now, one other thing I find shocking about this footage is how calm the officers are in responding to this. They make it seem like it's just routine, as if cars are just crashing through their walls every hour of every day. It's like they just get out there and they're annoyed, like bothered. Oh, jeepers. Jiminy Christmas. Another one? All right, come here, son. I can't believe you've done this. Oh, bother. All right, book him. Now we're gonna have to clean up another wall. I just don't know how it's possible to be that calm in that situation. They just look exhausted. They look tired and annoyed. Whereas, like, that would be the most shocking jump scare imaginable. Jump scares don't scare me in horror movies or horror games or anything like that. But this, this would probably actually have me shit myself. 100% I would stain my britches. 
That is the most unexpected thing to happen. And it's not like that's immediately what you would expect the sound to be. Like, they were in the room over, so they would have just mainly heard it as opposed to see it right away. That must have sounded like a bomb going off. My first thought would be that we had just been hit by a drone strike or something. I wouldn't immediately think, like, a car came through here or something. Like, that, that, I would be in a panic. I would be inconsolable. I'd be shaking. Meanwhile, these two officers here walk out like they'd just been rudely interrupted from their nap. It's just wild to me. Also, something I didn't mention. I, I mentioned that he had previously crashed into another uh, building, a private residence. Well, what I didn't mention is that first crash had happened only minutes prior to this one. So this guy was just on a rampage, he must have been looping Welcome to the Jungle here, and it was bringing the worst out of him. Now they haven't disclosed what the motive could have possibly been for crashing into the police station, but here's where I come into the equation, because I'm about to crack this case wide open. This is what I think happened. This is my theory, I got the cork board up with a bunch of red lines drawn to a bunch of different scenarios. So let's piece together what we know for sure. His first crash into the private residence was due to a disagreement with the owner, and it was meant to scare and harass them. I think right after he committed to that, he knew shit was not going to go well for him, so he wanted to go out with a bang. So then he drove a few minutes away to the police station and turned himself in the only way he knew how. With Welcome to the Jungle sending him off like a WWE walkout song and a giant fucking explosion here of crashing through the building. I think his motive was truly he had just ruined his life prior by crashing through the private residence. And he just decided to go all in into the lunacy and then crash through the police station. That's what I think happened here because there's no other potential explanation that I can think of. Not even the, in the realm of science fiction. Like, I can't think of, you know, maybe a possession or something or like some kind of alien event or anything to try and explain away what could possibly have led to this. I really think it was him knowing that he had already committed a serious crime and he just, I don't know, decided to go even harder for it and, and just call it quits by driving through the police station. Or another very likely explanation is he has severe mental illness and completely fucking snapped. That's also very possibly the case here. Who knows? I am excited to see when they finally reveal the motive because he doesn't seem like a man who's going to be, you know, tight-lipped. It doesn't seem like he's going to be hard to get the truth out of. He probably told them at the police station why he did it. They just haven't said to the public yet. He literally got out and celebrated like he just scored a fucking touchdown in an NFL game, right? This isn't a guy who's going to be super hard to get to the bottom of with his reasoning. He's probably an open book who will just tell them why he did it. But yeah, anyway, I just had to share this story and clip with all of you because, my goodness gracious, that is like something you would see as a fake headline in a in like a, the background of a movie or, or a game or something. Just something that people would make up because it sounds ridiculous. But it actually happened. So yeah, that, that's really about it. See ya.